everyone welcome back to too cool for middle school welcome back to my classroom i don't think we've been in here since before school started like when i was setting up my classroom and mariah was in here she was only six months old when i was setting up my classroom and now tomorrow is her first birthday actually i guess that means we've been in school for six months i was just telling my students <laughs> today because i have seventh graders and sixth graders and i had some of these seventh graders last year as sixth graders and so i was like remember this time last year i went out on maternity leave and then they had a sub for the rest of the year and that was so nice i wish i could go out on maternity leave again but i get to teach really fun things right now so in my sixth grade history classes we are currently on ancient china it is february right now so the way that i do our pacing is we start with like early humans and then we get into ancient Mesopotamia and those ancient Mesopotamian empires and then we do ancient Egypt and the ancient Hebrews and um, Nubia and that's all kind of like first semester like you know before the winter break and then when we come back we do ancient China so that we can have a lunar new year celebration so we already had that so now we're kind of in like the second half of our ancient China unit and then we'll go into ancient India and in March we're gonna have a holy festival celebration so we're in the middle of planning that right now and then we do ancient Greece and then ancient Rome and that's the end of the year so here we are in the middle and we're in ancient China and one of my favorite favorite things to teach just the coolest artifacts ever are the terracotta warriors and i've said this a few times before but i i am 99 percent sure that i just did not get social studies in middle school like sixth or seventh grade i did not do ancient history or world history my teachers just didn't do it i know sometimes kids say that like i never learned this but really i didn't because i loved history i would have remembered this we didn't we never learned anything about ancient china and i didn't have that many like asian history classes even in college so as i've been learning about ancient china it's mostly on my own like on my own reading and i take classes at usc they have a um, u.s china institute for educators so you can go there and just learn like amazing things they have online classes ucla has like a history project that also does online trainings and then i've gone to a few in-person trainings so i've educated myself quite a bit in the last couple of years about ancient China and ancient India and these things that I really didn't learn in school and I also didn't get that much of in college but that are really really important for me to understand now that this is what I teach and I have so many students in my classes who are Chinese and Indian and it's just like it feels highly disrespectful to me to not like know my stuff when I'm like teaching students about like their own history really you know so anyways the terracotta warriors are just endlessly fascinating I've done a ton of just like research on my own time about them because I think they're so cool so for the past couple of years whenever I teach ancient China I'm like all right I'm obsessed with the terracotta warriors we're gonna be talking about them every single day until i run out of content we do like a youtube video or something every single day because i'm like there is just endlessly fascinating information about them look how cute this guy is this is terry terry the terracotta warrior one of my students printed him out on her 3d printer for every unit that we do she prints me just like different artifacts relating to that unit and it's so fun i have a little collection over here but he is my favorite and he's like barbie doll size so i'm like my terracotta warrior barbie i love him so we've got him and there are just some really cool videos and resources online about the terracotta warriors that i wanted to share with you today in our textbook our textbook is fine it's the tci you know history alive i guess textbook whatever it's okay it has like this much like this little paragraph about the terracotta warriors and like a little tiny picture and i'm like how do you not have like a whole like you know extra dedicated section like this is the coolest thing so i put together just a couple of my favorite resources so we went outside of the textbook and i've put this together in a, a lesson plan that you can get on teachers pay teachers so the first video is from ted ed it's excellent because all the ted ed videos are and because the narrator has a really good chinese accent and so we 
watch a lot of videos just about like China in general, like the geography or, or whatever. Like some of them are just um, like embedded within our textbook or, you know, it's something from like National Geographic or whatever. And I wouldn't really know that the pronunciation is terrible, but I've had students like cover their ears at how bad the pronunciation is. I had a kid one year who would like run out of the classroom every time somebody, you know, some white person had really horrible pronunciation in a video. It's usually the river, like people will say, the Wang He River, <laughs> in the way that you actually pronounce it is like, Wang He. They've, they've been teaching me, I've been practicing. Um, so anyway, this video has excellent pronunciation. I think that's really important and it's about four and a half minutes long. That's like the perfect length for the sixth graders that I teach, that's about as long as we can hold their attention with the video. So I wrote a couple of like video notes questions to go along with the video just so that they, you know, have like interacted with it a little bit and they can like hold on to those facts because sometimes when you hear something it just, you know, it was interesting at the time but you have to remember it somehow. So they can either, you know, watch that video as a group and then you can like pause it and they can type in the answers or you could kind of do like a flipped classroom thing where they watch it at home and just like pause it themselves and type in the answers or however you wanna do it. So we do that video on one day and then the next video is by the BBC and the person that they interview, I always tell them like, she has my dream job. She gets to work at this museum and work with the Terracotta Warriors all the time and her pronunciation is obviously much better when she's pronouncing words in Chinese. She has an accent when she's speaking English. Um, but that video is amazing and you get to see up close to you know what these warriors look like and she talks about how they were actually brightly colored and they have found like the paint kind of stuck to the soil around them and so they know that they were like bright red and bright purple and blue and green and all these different colors. So that video is really cool. There's another one that I found like you know that came up next just like suggested on YouTube and it's another guy who works there, an archaeologist who like puts together the broken pieces of these terracotta warriors. That video is really cool too. Um, I can like link it down below this video. But I think that's another cool thing is to like show kids like what types of jobs are available in history, like to work at that museum and reconstruct terracotta warriors for a living would be awesome. <laughs> and I tell them like, if any of you ever do get that job in the future, please invite me behind the scenes to see what you're doing. Because I would just think that was the coolest thing ever. Um, then there's also a link to a website that tells you more about um, this museum in China where you can see these warriors and then it has like a ton of information about them as well So this is kind of like a web quest like they read through the different sections and answer a few questions So you could do that all at once or you could just do it kind of slowly throughout the week Which is what I did so we were kind of doing different lessons throughout the week But every single day we'd have like terracotta warrior time because I need to talk about them a little bit each day I like need to get my fix in so once they've learned quite a bit about these warriors, then I made this, <laughs> I'm like so happy with this. This is a little coloring page that they colored uh, because the warriors did not actually look like this. They, they were brightly colored and painted, right? So then they have to color them with their bright colors and do the eyes and the mustache and everything and write five facts, five interesting facts about the warriors because we've learned so much about them at this point. Um, it looks best, I took somebody's example here, um, if they just kind of give him like some context, like give him a little background, like in real life he would just be like in a hole surrounded by dirt, but you know, whatever they want to do as a background or a border or something ends up looking a little better. So here's what it would look like up close. I covered up the name right here, but this is a good one. Some of them, um, did all different things with these guys and they're all different colors because that's what they really would have been like. They're all unique, they have unique faces, unique hairstyles, unique ears. Every single one of them is different. It's amazing. So as they were working on them today, I was like, I feel like Chin Shi Wang Di and you guys are the workers like creating the army for me, like make my army for me <laughs> and I'll be buried with them. So we're also very obsessed, I'm very obsessed with Emperor Chin and I put different pictures of him up on our daily slides every day and as we start that section of our textbook, I'm like, we're entering our villain era and we're gonna be talking about him every day. So I just find teaching ancient history to be so much fun, especially 
especially ancient China, and I just don't see that reflected very often. So I just, I wanna put it out there that teaching ancient China is really fun, it's really interesting. How has there not been like a night at the museum type movie about these guys coming to life in the middle of the night? I don't know. Um, or, you know, like a Barbie set of the Chin Warriors or something. There are so many cool things you can do with this. So um, I will leave a link below to this little resource that's just really fun. Also, if you have a vocabulary subscription, they have a video about the Terracotta Warriors and some you know quizzes and stuff that go along with that. We loved that. There's also a Nearpod um, virtual like field trip thing that we did that's really fun if you have a Nearpod subscription and it's just like the ancient China like virtual field trip thing. If you just type in ancient China, it'll show up, but it has um, the Great Wall and then it also has this museum. It's just like a big open pit. It's in like an airplane hangar with all of the soldiers that they have unearthed. There's a bunch more that they haven't. There's like 8,000 total. I think there's like 2,000 that are on display that you can see. So it's really, really cool. You could also just go on YouTube if you don't have um, a Nearpod subscription and just find videos um, of people who have visited that place. So there's tons that you could do. I hope that I've gotten you excited to teach ancient China and go use this resource if you want. I will link it down below. So if you do, send me some pictures of what your students make because I would love to see them. Okay, I have things to pick up for Mariah's birthday party tomorrow. I gotta go with the balloons and the food and the cupcakes and everything. So I gotta go, but thank you so much for hanging out in my classroom today. Thanks for nerding out about Terracotta Warriors. I love them. See you later from me and Terry.